Hello and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Daily Triple, your no shit gaming news video. That's three news stories in one video with zero faff. FIFA is one of the biggest games on the planet and probably always will be, unfortunately. On top of game sales from an annual release franchise, EA makes even more money through its loot bar. Oh, sorry, I mean surprise mechanic system, Ultimate Team. In addition to being a form of gambling in a kid's game, Ultimate Team is one of the worst examples of pay to win in the industry, and yet EA continues to claim it is all earnable through regular gameplay. Well, one FIFA player has crunched the numbers himself and found that in order to build his dream team, it would cost tens of thousands of hours or real money. Scuds TV made a Twitter thread explaining exactly how long it would take to create this team which costs 100 million FIFA coins to prove that it is not realistically attainable like EA claims it is. His dream team consists of icons that even a non-football fan like me are aware of like Ronaldo, Pele and Ronaldinho. The first method is to play matches to earn the necessary 100 million FIFA coins. Following this method, you would have to play 66,666 matches, which at an average of 20 minutes per game will add up to 22,000 hours or 916 days of non-stop playing. The second method involved trading on the in-game market to earn the 100 million coins. This method would require earning 10k in profits per trade and a total of 10k in trades. If he did one 10k trade every 10 minutes, he'd need to trade for 1,650 50 hours or 69 days straight. The third and final method is the one that EA really wants you to follow, paying real money for 100 million coins. He worked out that he'd need to spend £80,000 across 1,000 packs of 12k FIFA points. So in order to acquire the necessary FIFA points for this admittedly god tier team, you've just got to spend over 20,000 hours playing the game, 1,650 hours trading at a high profit which is unlikely and just another form of gambling, or paying 80,000 in real money outright. We all already knew how ridiculous this system was, but putting actual numbers to it really highlights how absurd the situation is. The thing is though, I may have mentioned how broken the system is in the title, but that's not even true. The system is functioning as designed as its only purpose is to extract money from you. All of this is actually outside of opening them as random packs, which is a whole other can of worms we've delved deep into before, and trust me, we're gonna get there. This particular case is just focused on the game's built-in trading economy that is designed to be as grindy as possible, therefore incentivizing you to buy the points outright or gamble on the chance to get the desired player in a pack. Naturally, a couple of people are actually arguing that this isn't a problem and that of course you've got to grind to get a team this good because the game hasn't finished its lifespan yet. But if we look specifically at Scuzz TV's numbers, earning even a single one of those 11 players will take a serious amount of time or cash. If we divide the raw numbers of 22,000 hours and 80,000 pounds by 11, we get a rough figure for each player, which to be fair in reality will vary somewhat, but it's still a serious commitment. 2,000 hours of grinding or over 7,000 1,200 pounds to get just one, one of these players is insane. Again, this system is explicitly designed to encourage and incentivize buying packs to get the chance of finding one of these high level players. Some people are even complaining about the quality of the team that Scuds TV used for this test, but that's completely not the point. Yes, this is an exceptional team and it should take work to earn that, but it should be possible to do with a reasonable amount of effort and not money so you can just pay for it and cheat. However, and I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here, the amount of effort is deliberately extended to make you spend more real money on FIFA points to speed up the process. Maybe not the full 80k, but a little pack here and there just to bolster your wallet. Plus, all of this is entirely meaningless by the time the next game comes out later this year. Years of academy training wasted! This video and Scuds TV's thread won't do anything to stop it, especially when people are going out of their way to defend it. Literally, the only thing to do is stop buying it, but I know I'm preaching to the choir here. Even if we take out the child gambling for just a moment, this is functioning as capitalism intends. EA is providing a service that people want to use. If you don't want it there, then stop buying it and then they won't be able to use the system. It's as simple as that. But of course, the capitalism angle still doesn't justify child gambling now, does it, EA? And next up, while EA is busy extracting every last penny from its players, Activision Blizzard is firing its staff. The company has laid off 50 employees within the esports programming and live events departments, though it is also reported that other areas are feeling the burn too. According to a spokesperson for the company, players are increasingly choosing to connect with our games digitally and the esports team, much like traditional sports, entertainment and broadcasting industries, has had to adapt its business due to the impact the pandemic has had on live events. Adapting your business model is something that happens literally every day, so 
shouldn't come as a surprise, and while layoffs are always shitty to hear about and go through, this situation could have been much, much worse. The 50 staff who were laid off, totaling only around 2% of the company's workforce, are being given 90 days of severance pay, health benefits, and job transition support. That's actually a pretty great package and much better than many places offer, but there was one notable thing in there which is pretty damn laughable. On top of those nice benefits, former employees of one of the biggest companies in all of gaming will also get a $200 gift card to Blizzard's Battle.net. $275 and uh, a Yogurt Land Rewards card. These now jobless folks can entertain themselves at home by playing games like World of Warcraft, Overwatch, and Call of Duty while they search for a new job right in the middle of a pandemic. Sorry we just fired you, but here, keep feeding the beast that just spat you out. If it was me, I'd be pretty resentful of the company that just sacked me, and it's damn audacious offering a gift card like that. It's patronizing. Ill-advised gift cards aside, this spat of firings doesn't seem as bad as some have been in the past, and as I said before, the severance and benefits packages are quite enviable, so it could be much, much worse, and I'm not going to grill active Vision Blizzard too hard. But I won't be letting them off too easy because the company recently spoke of booming sales and new records within the company. As a result of this success through 2020, the company said it expects to hire 3,000 new staff. To be fair, it specified that these new hires will be in production and development while these layoffs were in esports and live events. The live event space has suffered greatly due to the pandemic and physical events being difficult or outright impossible to run explains why this department was culled, though it's still horrible to see your company thriving one minute only to lose your job a month later. Layoffs are always awful and I hope everyone finds new work soon, but at least they got a good severance package. I'm not going to shit all over Activision Blizzard for this, uh, well not any more than usual for being one of the highest earning companies in all of gaming, screwing over even a small portion of its employees while the folks at the top earn millions and lose nothing. But that's just my general cynicism about huge corporations who don't care about their workers. TLDR, it's a shitty situation, but it could have been much worse. And finally, just a quick one to finish up with a game that I think looks pretty cool. Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance was announced at the Game Awards in 2019 with one of the worst trailers I've ever seen. Now some gameplay has been officially dropped and it actually looks like a lot of fun. Developed by Took Games, I'm going to go with that and say that I pronounced it correctly, and published by Wizards of the Coast, the official license holders of the D&D IP, the game is a third-person co-op action brawler set within the D&D universe. You'll play as one of four characters in classic classes based on the Drizzt novels. Drizzt the Rogue, Catibri the Ranger, Bruna the Fighter, and Wolfgar the Barbarian. Contrary to D&D's turn-based and choice-driven gameplay, Dark Alliance will be a more straightforward action RPG with light attacks and heavy attacks, special abilities, and combos. It will also have its own loot and progression systems, so imagine a Diablo-style RPG but with almost a hack-and-slash-esque twist. After starting D&D myself this time last year, I'm really excited about this game as a more action-focused experience will work well against titles like Baldur's Gate 3, which follows the D&D formula more closely. Both of those games scratch a particular itch, so it's a great time to be a D&D player or even just a fantasy fan in general. According to a dev diary with the studio, they just started developing it without permission from Wizards of the Coast and they just kept bugging them until they officially got the green light and even agreed to publish it for them. There are links to different gameplay videos and demos below if you want to see more and it is expected to launch on June 22nd this year for PS4 and 5, both Xbox Series and PC. Role-playing games often use a 20-sided dice. Moss, yeah. I want to stop listening to this. I completely understand. <laughs> And that's your lot for today. If you enjoyed this no shit format, go ahead and give the video a like to give it a boost. Hit subscribe and the bell if you want to stay up to date on all future installments. Toss a coin to your YouTuber over at patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. That's all for today. I've been Henry Cooper. Bye for now.